Hello, this is Rod Standage, and we're going to show you how to make a pop can rocket stove boiler. Uh, the materials you're going to need are a 38 or 40 ounce soup can, bean can. You're going to need two 16 ounce beverage containers. You're going to need a 12 ounce tuna or chicken tin. You're going to need two rivets. The rivets, uh, you're going to need a short one about a quarter inch long, and you're going to need a longer one about a half an inch long. The diameter is less important. These two are uh, eighth inch, but you can use uh, a three sixteenths or other um, size. You need a couple of uh, rivet washers and a couple of nuts. These are uh, we're actually using these for spacers, so anything that will um, that you can use for a spacer is fine. From a tools perspective, you're going to need a can opener, a church key, tin snips, utility knife, drill bits for the size of the uh, rivets you have, a uh, sharpie marker, a drill, and uh, your pop rivet, um, uh, pop rivet uh, plier. Uh, if you want to make different sizes, you can make a 12 ounce version by using a 28 ounce soup can, and you can make a 24 ounce version by, by using a 55 or 53 ounce soup can. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well we're back and what we've done is we've taken the bottom out of the small can and we've taken the top out of the big can. And the, we, the reason that we've done this is so that the, um, the two cans will set together and form a nice little bond there. Uh, that's kind of the con final configuration, although it, um, you know, they'll have some other pieces. But um, we've added a couple of tools to our mix. We added a round file. We used the file to uh, remove any burrs. Uh, we used a utility knife to cut the um, the uh, small tin uh, and the ball peen hammer we're going to use a little later I'll show you how to where we use that uh, you don't really need one you can get away with um, you know the the back side of the utility knife really uh, is, is fine um, you want to remove the paper off of the tin cans and also as much of the glue as possible uh, any glue uh, will melt when the uh, when it gets hot and then it kind of just becomes a sticky mess and it'll stain the can black. Uh, so try to remove that if you can. Uh, here's an example of what uh, of what glue does right there. All right, um, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, well we're back and uh, now we're going to mark the cans and there's a mark on this one. It's just a simple round mark and this will be where we cut that out. Uh, it will be the air intake for the rocket stove effect. Uh, which will, is created by the chimney effect of having both of these cans together. This one here, uh, what you're going to do is place your um, juice can on the bottom and draw a circle. And then you're going to put a couple of wings on it right here and here. And this is the part of the can that we're going to cut out. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Uh, but before we do that, we want to use the church key and uh, cut about five, four or five holes here. That it, this will give us increased air intake uh, to uh, help with the chimney effect. So we're back. We've cut out a little door-shaped uh, area here. This will allow, allow the wood to lie flat. I found that it's more efficient if you load from the bottom, although you can drop wood from the top. Um, we've also used the church key to um, cut these here. You want to do these first while the can still has some structural uh, strength. We've used a can opener uh, to cut along here and here and we will use the tin snips and utility knife to finish out cutting out the rest of this. Okay, so we're finished cutting the can. I actually used the utility knife to uh, make the entire cut but uh, now we're ready to go to the next step which is to uh, to prepare the um, the holder and uh, rivet it in, rivet the rest of the can in. So um, what we're going to do is cut the end off of, um, off of one of these cans here. We're going to leave about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so we're just going to use the utility knife and just very gently go around this can. Cutting, again you want to be very careful. These are very sharp edges and they will cut you. Um, but with a little bit of care it's uh, not overly dangerous. Now this piece right here will actually hold the bottom. So you'll actually end up pushing it in there and it'll form a nice little cap, a little cradle to hold it. 
Uh, now what we're going to do is again you can use the, um, the back side of a utility knife or you can use a ball peen hammer. And all you want to do is just mash this flat down to where it's the level of this is at the, actually at the bottom down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole here and a hole here. And uh, the spacing that you want along here, the spacing that you want along here is going to be the width of your spacer. So in this case we're looking at about three-eighths of an inch and uh, we're going to drill a hole through here and into here and then we're going to rivet this onto the back side Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to set this right here. I've got a tin can down. And uh, that's all we're doing. Now we're going to take the small rivet, put it in the bottom here. We're going to take our can, and, and it's going to be cup side up. Use our eighth inch washer. Okay, so once you get this set up correctly, you've got the uh, tin cup in the bottom, you've got the washer, you've got the rivet. Um, simply squeeze down here, pop the rivet off, and that gives that cup a nice, you know, that's all, that's all you need. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take the um, can here that uh, you're using for the inside and you're going to find the short end. That's the end with the holes here. And that's the end you're going to line up with the uh, the mouth of the can. And you're simply going to set this right here and fit it down inside the cradle, the cup. And next we're going to drill a hole through here and into this can. And we're going to use the drill bit for the size of rivet that we're going to use. And I'll go ahead and make that drill and then I'll show you how to attach the rest of it here. Okay, so now we've drilled the hole here. And this side here is lined up with the center hole here because it's going to be on the small side. That's the side you're going to pour from. And so all we're going to do is we're going to just set the, uh, the rivet in. We're going to put our first spacer on. We're going to put our second spacer on. Have it go into the can. And then we're going to put the uh, washer on the inside there and that's it so very sturdy um, locked into place again it's a very tight seal here you might get a little bit of weeping out of here and if you want to plug that with some kind of like a JB weld or something you can do that but uh, chances are you won't you won't get uh, any leakage out of that so we are now ready to um, to show you how it, how it all works okay very similar to any rocket stove what you're doing is you're just using scrap fuel and uh, you want to just kind of break it up here this is stuff that I've collected uh, around my yard. Um, just want to get a little bit, bit of it here. Uh, the idea is to make a real quick fire start, a little bit of uh, fuel. Um, I use uh, hand sanitizer as a fire starter. You've usually typically got it when you're backpacking and you just need just a little do dose of it and um, you get the fire started. Go ahead and put some water in here while that, uh, that kind of gets going there. And the nice thing about this size is um, 16 ounces is, is a good size for most um, uh, freeze-dried meals. Um, just basically you put it in here, it's going to create a chimney effect and it will actually just start start boiling, uh, start burning rather. Uh, you don't need to blow on it. Uh, typically they say with this kind of a stove, 
if you've got a, a little bit of a wind, you want to put the opening here into the wind so that the wind will kind of blow and, and help uh, uh, create your chimney effect. Um, you know, you can use uh, two or three. Um, two or three pieces in the bottom. Again, it allows you to drop uh, fuel right to the top if you'd like. This, uh, you can create a little cap for this if you'd like, but um, unless you blow here, there's very little ash or soot that comes up. All the, all the smoke stain is going to be contained inside the vessel, so you don't really have to worry about that. It looks like I've got smoke blowing from this direction, so I'm going to rotate it. Well, I want you to see it, so we're going we're to put it right here. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna dislodge the camera and let you get take a little bit closer look. All right, there we go. Okay, well we're back. It's been burning now maybe four minutes or so. This is still the same fuel that I had in there earlier. Uh, just for uh, information. The 12 ounce with the base is 5.3 ounces total weight. The 16 ounce with the base is 6.1, roughly 6.1 ounces. And the 24 ounce uh, with the base is 7.3 ounces. Uh, you don't carry any fuel with you in this. You basically can collect the fuel right off the trail. Well, we had a bit of a stronger wind than normal. And uh, so after about seven minutes, we have a royal boil. Uh, the tool that I use is just um, a, uh, pot, um, a pot plier, um, and you can use this to, uh, to grab the edge of the, uh, pour, out, uh, pour out boiling water. Now as soon as you remove this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill the chimney effect, so if you want to continue, uh, you put it back. Uh, an interesting thing about this, uh, you can also use this to... Um, discard your uh, ashes. In this fashion here. Um, this will actually cool pretty quickly. Within a minute or so, this will actually be cool to the touch. And um, it will insulate the water so that the water will stay hot and this will actually be cool to the touch and you'll be able to pick it up after a few minutes and you won't need you won't need the pot flyer. Okay, so now I wanted to show you a, a variation on this. Um, continuing to, uh, to feed fuel from the bottom here. You can cut yourself another tin. I just used a, uh, um, a metal cutting tool here. Put this right up on top. And, uh, and now you've got a cook surface. Uh, the nice thing about this is while it will uh, be smoky, uh, the smoke is coming around from the edges rather than from the top and, and, um, and uh, it'll you know, save your, your pan a little bit. The heat transfer isn't as good uh, as an open fire, but um, it uh, is nonetheless uh, effective uh, as a, another cook surface. So I wanted to show you um, some kind of the details here. Uh, what this looks like um, from the bottom again the pour direction is off of this center cut here and that's where you want your the mouth of your um, of your uh, can to be um, rivet here this is what it looks like this is a little bit of soot collects here um, a little bit of soot will be on the inside but the outside it's a little warm the outside won't have uh, any soot on it at all here's again where the glue is um, you want to make sure you try to get as much of that off as possible before you do it the very first time. Um, and you won't, uh, you know, the can will actually stay nice looking for, for quite a while. My name is Rod Standage. Here I am. And uh, it's been fun. And I hope you enjoy cooking on your stove. Um, if you've got any suggestions, please email me. Thanks. Bye.